we're going to be covering three points. One, how easy it is to create a backup using Shadow Protect. Two, how to recover file and folders in 10 to 15 seconds. And three, also how to restore a crash server in a temporary virtual environment in typically three to five minutes. So what we'll do, we'll move forward and let's get on with it. So what we'll do is go into, go into our backup. First thing you'll see here is that Shadow Protect has a very clean and simple interface. So we click on the backup and it's with the driven. So from here, we'll click on next and follow the bouncing ball. Now for the purpose of the demonstration, what we're going to do today is back up our C volume. As you'll notice, it's about 35 gigs of data and we're going to be backing up about 16 gigs. So we'll go next. This is where we browse out to our repository. So what we'll do is go into our VDR or our backup disaster recovery appliance. And for the demonstration, we'll back up our Exchange, Exchange SID. Now what you'll see here is we have our backup schedule. Now, we have several options here available to you. So you'll see there's weekly, monthly, continuous incrementals. So what we've been finding is that with most of our customers, they choose to have continuous incrementals. Now, let's say that you're a business, you're operating 24 by 7, seven days a week, and you can't really afford to have any downtime. So what I'll do is we'll select Saturday and Sunday to cover you for that, for that time frame. And we'll start our backup, let's say, at 6.02 a.m. And we'll finish our backup at 5.45 a.m. Now the next, next one down from here is minutes between backups. So what we're going to do is dial this down to 15. So that's 15 minutes between incrementals. Now you'll notice down the bottom that we have backups, 95 backups per day. Now using your typical block-based backup product, this would be terrifying. So however we shadow protect, because we're sector-based continuous incremental technology, this task is made easy. So what we'll do is we'll go next. Now here we can actually enter a password. Now I only want to show you just a couple of key points here, and it's not a technical demo, so I'm not going to get right into it. But one of the key points here is encryption. Here you'll notice that we have three different types of encryption. Bottom one being a 256-bit, which is generally classified as military-based. So we'll click on the second one. Second last option down here is enable self-healing incremental recovery. What this means to you is that Shadow Protect has the ability to heal a chain. So we'll get out of here, and we don't need a password for the demonstration. So we'll go next and finish. So what we've just demonstrated here is how easy it is to create a backup using Shadow Protect. Now it's taken me about two to three minutes, but I'd say once you give it a go, yourself, it may only take you just a couple of minutes. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll execute this full. Now whilst that's going, I'll wind that down. And what we'll do is move forward and show you how to recover a file and folder in 10 to 15 seconds. So what we'll do is go down to our start, browse out to our explorer, and go into our BDR, business disaster recovery appliance, excuse me, and from here, what we'll do is we'll go into our Exchange server. Now, what we have here is what your typical Shadow Protect chain looks like. So what you'll notice is you have your v001.spf, which is your full base, v001-i001.spi. That's your first incremental. i002.spi, which is your second incremental, third, fourth, fifth, and so on. So let's say, as an example, let's say Adam comes in the office in the morning. at 7.30 and Adam's been working on a document all day. At 5.08 in the afternoon, Adam decides to go grab a coffee. And whilst he's out, there's a system glitch. Adam comes back with his coffee and realises, hey, my document's not there. Typically, he'd call his IT support person. But wait on a second, it's not on last night's backup. So sorry, Adam, you'd have to do it again. However, with Shadow Protect, what we'll show you here is how with a few mouse clicks you can successfully restore files and folders in seconds. So let's do that now. So what we do is we right click on this incremental before the glitch happened. Let's go into the second option, which is Quick Mount. And what we're doing here is taking this incremental, the previous incrementals and the base, and loading it into a temporary read-only volume. 
Now what it's done here is picked up the next letter, so which is E. So what we do from here is go into user data, go into Adam, go into brochures, and pick the bottom one. So Adam, is this the document that you've lost? Yes it is, great. So what we'll do from here is basically do a click, drag and drop over to Adam on his desktop, and Adam can then do a file save as, and save it into another location. So what I'll do from here is close out from here, and now we've successfully restored his file and folder. So once we've done that, we'll go over to the temporary read-only volume, simple, couple of more clicks, right click, about halfway down, go into quick dismount, and now that's gone. So we've just demonstrated how quick and easy it is to restore files and folders using Shadow Protect. Now we'll move forward from here and we'll demonstrate how to restore your server, a crash server, into a temporary virtual environment in three to five minutes. So let's say you're a business, you're 24 by 7 again, seven days a week, and at 508 your exchange server, critical exchange server crashes. Now the business exchange server is offline, you can't receive quotes, can't send out emails, and this is having a catastrophic effect on your business. Now typically, in the best case scenario, restoring a physical server can take anywhere from one to three days, often over a week. With Shadow Protect, we'll demonstrate how you can restore your Exchange server in a temporary virtual environment in a matter of minutes. So what we'll do is click on the last incremental, but what we'll do, we'll go one step further. Let's say at 505, this incremental was a virus or it was corrupt, and that was the cause of your server crashing. So logically what we do is we go to the previous incremental. So let's click on right click and third option down, and we'll go into virtual boot. As you'll see, once again it's wizard driven, so we'll click on next and follow the bouncing ball. So yes, it is a bootable drive, and if this in fact was your exchange server, it would also bring up your CDE volumes. So here what we can actually do is give it a unique name. You can allocate some RAM to it or some memory. But for the purpose of the demonstration, we'll leave it as is. Click Next and we'll go Finish. So what we're doing here, we're now doing, what we're doing here, we're now doing a HIR. Okay, which is a hardware independent restore or a bare metal restore. So an any to any migration. So what that means is that you can actually do physical to physical, physical to virtual, virtual to virtual, or we'll go back from virtual to physical. It really doesn't matter. So now what it's doing, it's taking our physical exchange server and creating a temporary virtual environment where our users are able to log in, allow business to continue as normal. Now as you can see, it's going through the process, it's almost there. And what our virtual technology, our virtual boot technology really is, is business continuity solution. Okay, so we'll click enter. And what this allows you as an organization is to minimize your downtime. Now there's a couple of key functions I did want to highlight here, is that whilst we're in this virtual environment, Shadow Protect will continue to take the backup images just as you'd scheduled. Okay, great, so it's just finishing, Windows is going through. Okay, and soon we'll be able to, to log in. Okay, wait for one more moment. So, in just there we go, so we're at the login screen. So from here what you do is you'd log in with a few minor tweaks, you'd then be able to get everyone back on the network, and you've now successfully restored your critical mail exchange server back into full production, and the business is back online. So from here, uh, we've demonstrated, and I'm just going to recap of what we've done. So we've gone through and we've shown, one, how easy it is to create a backup using Shadow Protect. We've also demonstrated how you can restore file and folders in seconds. And third, how to restore a crash server back into a temporary virtual environment and be back up and running in minutes. So from here, 